When you discover that your furnace seems to no longer be functioning, if you're the type that troubleshoots things, this video may be helpful and save you money. This is a gas forced air furnace, and since originally installed, it has made a lot of noise on startup. We were told that was just normal. Okay, great. That was not what caused our problem, but it is bad engineering. When parts were needed because it had quit, we were told by the local vendor they wouldn't sell us parts. Only they would install them. Being cold out and a family with no heat didn't matter. Well, no, I didn't have them come out, nor would I suggest anyone buy from them or this brand furnace. What I can show you is one of the fixes that comes necessary on a furnace such as this and how you can get your heat restarted immediately. First, if the thermostat is calling for heat and nothing happens, shut your power off to the furnace. Now turn it back on. The fan should cycle and after a pause, the furnace ought to start. Watching through the sight glass, you should see the igniter light up. If not, this is not your video. If you do see the igniter light up, it will soon call for gas via what's called the air pressure switch. Here's where we'll stop the video and discuss what to do if the igniter shuts down without the gas starting and lighting. We expect that the air pressure switch has failed. Turn the furnace's power off before continuing. Okay, this is the air pressure switch shown here. There are two air lines going into it. We're going to remove the one that's most convenient and we're going to very gently blow back and forth into it. This should allow you to hear a light clicking of the micro switch that's fastened to it. If you hear that light clicking, it should have allowed the micro switch to become unstuck. Yeah, I forgot to shave. We can check for continuity of the air pressure switch while it's mounted to the furnace with a volt ohm meter. The switch is normally open, so there shouldn't be any continuity there, even with the wires attached. If there is continuity there, it means the switch is stuck in the closed position. But either way, we'll try blowing into the pressure switch's diaphragm and see if we can get it to loosen up. To see if this works, turn your power back on, let the furnace cycle, and now see if the igniter lights, and when it clicks and calls for gas, the gas comes on and your furnace is working. If not, we'll have to try something else. If it has, you can use your furnace now and watch it and see if it continues to work, but you still should try to make a more permanent fix. If the igniter goes out and the furnace never called for gas, we'll start over again. You're familiar with what the igniter looks like when it comes to full brightness, but this time we're going to recycle the furnace and we're going to jump across the two contacts on the micro switch, which is mounted to the air pressure diaphragm. We're only, going to, we're only going to jump it after the igniter has reached full glowing intensity. This will cause the furnace now to ask for gas and your furnace should start and you should be able to leave that jumper wire on there while the thermostat is calling for heat. Once it stops calling for heat, disconnect the jumper wire and leave it off. This is only a temporary thing to do. Let the house heat up for a while and then turn the power off to the furnace. You can wait to try to fix the air pressure switch, but we'll go ahead and show what you can do to fix this problem. So we're going to remove the air pressure switch. You can see there's two screws, two wires, and two hoses that are connected to it. Now that we've got it off, we can look and show you the holes where the screws held it on. We can show you the two airline connectors and we can show you the two wire connectors so you can see it easily. Now you have choices to make. 
you can figure out the model you have and go online and buy a new one. They cost anywhere from $70 to $150. Or you can say, hey, maybe I can just replace the micro switch because that's probably what's bad. That's what I'm going to show you here. And those can be obtained much cheaper than buying the whole unit. You can buy a switch for anywhere between 5 and 15 bucks. So let's try that. The old micro switch is riveted on, so we're going to try drilling these rivets out with a larger drill bit than what the rivet head is. Unfortunately, they just seem to spin, so I'm going to use a Dremel tool and shave the end of the rivet off. Now I'm going to just take a smaller drill bit and push that rivet out, and now I should be able to remove my micro switch. Okay, here are the components. We'll take a look at the switch in particular because we have to find that same model online. And we have to find a couple fasteners to reattach it. While we have the micro switch off, we'll again test for continuity. The switch is normally open, so we'll push the button on it back and forth and see if the switch opens and closes properly. This is what it needs to do when air pressure activates it, when it's mounted on the diaphragm. I mentioned rehabilitating the switch, and at this time, rather than replace the switch, you could try cleaning it out with some contact cleaner. It's not really made to do this, but you can try it and monitor it and see how it works. It's certainly the cheapest and quickest way to tackle this problem. Okay, here's a couple views of the unit put back together with the small machine screws. Looks pretty good. Let's install it and give it a try. Well, there. That's what it's supposed to look and sound like when the igniter switch comes on and then it calls for gas. Well, once you have it reinstalled back on the furnace, the proof will be how well it works over a period of time. If you've replaced the entire unit or replaced the micro switch with a new one, you should have a pretty good fix there and you shouldn't have to worry about it. If you've cleaned it with contact cleaner, you might want to monitor it over a period of time to make sure it's working well before you were to leave the home for any extended period of time if the temperatures are going to go below freezing. That is trying to fix it on the cheap and you have to understand that it may not work for the long term. Any of the three ways you fixed it, I hope this video has been of some assistance to you in getting your home back warm. So thanks a lot for watching. Good luck. Remember the devil is in the details.